All right, guys, we're back on the channel with a message for 2020. These are 20 things you can do. I know everybody's going to have their, uh, their goals for 2020. These are some things that you should absolutely look to do. I'm going to run down a list of 20 things, probably throw in a bonus at the end. But uh, for you guys that are looking to uh, either improve upon or maybe start your investing career, these are some things that you might want to think about when we're entering into 20. So let's get into it, guys. First thing, most important thing for new investors, if you're not involved in the market, First thing out of the gate, man, you're going to want to look at discovering investing, okay? Make sure that you're doing your research and making sure that you're uncovering all of the opportunities. I say it's never been a better time to become an investor. 2020 is going to be no different, all right? I know there's a lot of people who are like, I don't know, I'm on the sideline, I don't know what to do, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You're going to continue to do that the rest of your life, okay? Now, I think the trick is if you're going to get involved for the first time in the market, I certainly want to look at the prospects of understanding the benefits of being an investor now, but also using some scale a little bit, but absolutely get involved, okay? Investing has so many rewards, and 2020 is going to be no better year to get involved in the market and starting to build wealth for your, your, yourself, okay? I don't know what the market's going to do next year. I don't know what it's going to do in five years. But wealth building over the long term is really what you need to be looking at. So for new investors, man, you want to get involved, get started in the market. Number two, you're going to want to make your Roth IRA contributions. Now, this is for anybody out there who has an existing or none at all. You would want to start the account, reevaluate where you are. We're going to enter into the overlap period between January 1 uh, and the tax deadline of April. So you can actually contribute for the previous year and the follow-on year. So that's why I call it the overlap period. So if you have catch-up contributions to make for 2019, you can absolutely do that. And then the, you're going to be eligible to contribute for the, ta the, the year 2020-2021. Uh, so that's your period to take a look at that. You're going to absolutely want to put some scrutiny on what you can do. If you've got some opportunity to improve upon those contributions, your opportunity should come January 1. It absolutely should be on your priority list moving into 2020. Number three, you're going to want to improve your budget. This is something that everybody can work on. Everybody needs to work on. Everybody should work on, not a lot of people do work on, okay? A lot of people will justify a lot of expenditures during the holiday season only to be kicked down the road, to be dealt with at another time. Well, January 1 will come, all right? And there will be a time where you're going to have to make up for that holiday spending, get back on track a little bit, and, and, be, and start to initiate that responsible budget. If you already do that, Pick one thing out of your budget that you can improve upon. I, I know it's not really a, a race that you uh, run and then you're at the end of it. Okay, There's always improvements that can be made. So pick one thing that you can improve upon in your budget and improve upon that. Number four, expect volatility. With this trading environment that we have now with quantitative trading, uh, algorithms are picking up on different things in the market, different trigger points. The market does in fact react to news and news is so available within a drop of a hat. The market can react almost real time. There's no way you can react or keep up with that. My suggestion is to expect it. So you're not surprised when the market takes an inject and processes that inject uh, and, and kicks up a little bit of volatility. The best medicine that I've found to deal with volatility is to expect it, okay? It's commonplace in the market. 2020 will be no different. We've got a presidential election next fall. I anticipate that's probably going to increase people's angst about the stock market and probably promote a little bit more volatility in the market. And I don't think volatility is going away. I just think it's something with the technology now that we have, I think it's something that we're going to have to get used to moving into 2020, all right? Build cash, okay? This is something that I talk about all the time. It, it, it always is applicable to anyone at any time, anywhere. Uh, I just think that uh, a lot of people within the investing landscape don't really talk about it as a viable defensive strategy. 
and it's worth visiting and it's worth sitting across somebody like myself that uh, really puts a little bit of focus on the importance of building cash. Look, if we were in a recession uh, or, or a bear market, I, I would be probably deploying some of my personal cap capital that I've built up over the time. I, I think having some dry powder ready to put to work in the case of an emergency, uh, certainly if something happens to where your job is a little bit more tied uh, to the underlying economic picture that we have here, and especially globally, uh, if in fact that applies to you, I think building cash is just a responsible thing to do. Never find yourself over levered to the market. Um, th there's never really been um, a time in my life where I've regretted having cash uh, available to me just in case, really just kind of as a backup. Uh, and, um, and it's part of my total co overall comprehensive program to have a nice cash pillar available to myself. Um, one that I talk about all the time for, for anybody out there, we're going to be coming into some tax returns, okay? It's everybody's favorite time of the year. It is tax season. What would you say about taking your tax return and investing it? Think I'm crazy? It's something that I've done every single year and it's a big strategy that I deploy and I don't hear a lot of people talking about it and it's really helped me build some wealth, okay? I don't come from money, so it's either through my income or through my side projects that I have that I'm able to build wealth. That's just one inject every single year. Uh, for you guys that are claiming zero and are looking at that as a payday, uh, and if you don't have a lot of debt at the end of the year coming into tax season, I know a lot of people like to consolidate debt, which is good too, but what about taking that money and then instead of going and blowing it on a 75 inch TV, why don't you think about investing that money? Just saying, it's an idea and it's one that I personally uh, deploy every single year in my strategy. I don't touch that money, it goes right into the investments or into the cash account, uh, whichever it fits, uh, whichever fits, all right? Um, the next is build resilience. Uh, this is an interesting as, uh, as well. I think a lot of people are happy being an investor when everything is rosy, okay? At some point in the future, let's just be safe about uh, the dialogue and the message that we put across the channel, there may be some potential for um, the markets to go down. I, I think it's going to be your opportunity, if you've built your program correctly, to sharpen your resiliency. It's going to be a key attribute to your success in the stock market. Um, it never ever is a, a, a bad time to readdress your ability to um, be, be resilient, okay? Understand those things that provide you that strategic edge in the market. That is what's gonna help you understand your resiliency, being a self-directed investor, tax protecting money, giving yourself those high quality dividend payers. Say it out loud if you need to, write it down if you need to, but don't go into a potential downturn or an eventual downturn in the market by nature of justifying your position in the stock market based on the last 10 years, because that's gonna be a false pretense for you. It really is. You're not appreciating what the stock market is as a whole. You can't just justify it when it's good and expect that it's gonna be good always. And when it changes and it's not so good, you're all of a sudden not into it, okay? Your resiliency should show you how to survive in both markets, both up and down, all right? So always wanna to look to evolve in your resiliency, okay? The next one is an interesting one. It's something that I'm personally going through now and that's to protect wealth. What I mean by that is if you do not have a will in place, my favorite uh, tool in protecting your assets for your heirs uh, is to start a living trust. If you don't know what that is, I'm not gonna get into it on this video. It's certainly um, information's available out there online uh, about the benefits of a living trust. If you don't have uh, anything like that set up, I would. this is the best time to start to reflect on those types of tools to make sure that while we're busy talking about investing and portfolio building and, and building wealth, 
uh, how is it that's, that it's going to be received uh, in the event of your untimely passing? And that gets us into life insurance as well. It's always a good question to ask yourself uh, if, if term life insurance is something that you may want to put. Maybe you have a supplement with your work. Revisit those policies, okay? Talk to your family members. Make sure that they understand that if the what if happens, that you're protected and your heirs can continue to enjoy the lifestyle that you work so hard to build up, okay? Next is find a side hustle. This is interesting enough. Again, a page out of my personal playbook. I do go to work. I do run a YouTube channel. I do eBay. I do um, do other things, you know, um, like Craigslist. We sell stuff that we don't need. And um, those little side hustles, they really, really help. And if there's something out there to you where you want to say, look, I, I'd like to deploy a little bit of a habit and maybe this habit can, uh, can help me generate a little bit of side hustle money, maybe to help you in the cash category or help you in the investing category, those little injects of money can really help you. Maybe you've got a, a, a ton of stuff laying around the house that you don't need anymore throw that stuff onto eBay. There's amazing how many people out there are willing to uh, to buy th those things and put them to good use instead of you just having them stuffed in a corner taking up space, okay? So find a side hustle. The 2020, never been a better time to exploit some of the wonderful opportunities online through Amazon. Um, we love eBay. That's kind of our thing. Um, but, uh, you know, find something that's going to fit for you and make it work. That's uh, very, very good advice as we move into 2020. Um, one thing I would ask of you guys, the next thing on my list is to make investing a priority. Why do I say this? It's because everybody I talk to in life, when I talk about investing, and it, it, it's not a priority at all. And I contend that your success in being able to save and looking at yourself as somebody that needs to be paid first and not last, it's going to be, it's going to be critical that you look at investing as more than just a, a something that you want to put aside and forget about. Make it a priority in your life. Make it a bigger section of what it is that you do with your daily life through the application of your budget, through your organization. Everything should be looked at through the lens of your priority that you put on your money. Guys, it's yours. Nobody is going to put more priority on your money than you. Make it happen, okay? The next one is be independent. <laughs> what I mean by that is your success, not only in life, but in the investing arena, is going to um, rely on your ability to, to think not in line with the crowd, okay? Your ability to separate from your um, decision making that the crowd is making when it's time to sell, 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 and everybody's panic selling. Um, we'll have a couple shocks during 2020, and um, your ability to remain steadfast on your program and do something opposite of what everybody else is doing, it's going to be, it's going to be critical, and that's going to be applicable not only in 2020, but beyond. And if you can transcend that advice into other aspects of your life, it's going to be, it's going to pay dividends for you if you're able to think different than everybody else, okay? I don't understand the group think mentality. It seems to me that the more independent in thought that I have, right or wrong, okay, it's just the nature of thinking independent that renders a lot of success for me, okay? Educate yourself. Pick one thing out there uh, that you can improve upon. Maybe it's a budgeting app. Maybe it's a new book. Maybe it's a new YouTube channel. Help, maybe you start a YouTube channel and come and collaborate with the Independent Investor channel. But pick one thing, one thing that you want to improve upon. They're out there, okay? I've got a lot of deficiencies and I spend a lot of my time trying to earmark and clean up those deficiencies to where I can clean, run the program that I want to run with my finances and 
and life in general, okay? So when it comes term, time to your education, if you're a beginning investor, you definitely want to look into some of the, that beginning terminology that we talk about, dollar cost average, what is a dividend, what is a dividend reinvestment program, what is a Roth IRA. You'll be glad that you did. Start to make that stuff more of an education priority for yourself. Um, so you can speak intelligently about what you're looking to do in empowering yourself, okay? Next is consolidate debt. If you have that debt out there and it's lingering from the holiday season or you've built it up over the previous few years, you're going to want to take concerted effort. The way I paid off debt, and I've been there before, okay? I'm not a hypocrite. I've had debt in my, in my past. The way I've paid it down is in large lump sums. There's no sugarcoating this advice, none. The only way to get rid of debt, especially unsecured debt, through a credit card is to make larger than average payments. And I'm not talking if there's a minimum payment of $100 that you pay $105. I'm talking about paying five, six, seven, a thousand dollars $1,000. If you get that tax return, do not go blow it on that 75 inch TV. Take that three or $4,000 and drop it on that debt. You will be glad that you did. It's a very difficult thing to do, but it's absolutely prudent advice to be offered for 2020. If you have that debt load, let's look to chip it down and get rid of it, okay? Americans especially have way too much debt. Each and every one of us probably has an area that we can pr improve upon when we're looking at consolidating our debt in the household, okay? Want to revisit your goals, okay? And if you're somewhere in no man's land and you've got, you know, two or three thousand dollars and you just started in the market, let's get you that first ten thousand dollar mark. If you're in between ten and fifteen thousand, let's get you up to that twenty-five thousand mark. If you're beyond that, let's get you up to that fifty and then the elusive one hundred thousand mark uh, and beyond, getting you up to that quarter million and and half a million and up to the seven figures. Putting a, a dollar amount in your head or writing it down it helps a lot. A lot of people think that they'll never meet any type of financial goal because they're so busy just spending what it is that they make. And they never ever think about putting that money away, furthermore, putting that money away into an asset that can fund itself over time. <laughs> You're basically circumventing the money from yourself. That's the key. You're intercepting the money from yourself. Intercept it and rechannel that money somewhere where it's going to allow you to grow over time. But uh, set those money goals, man. You'll be glad that you did. Something else you're going to want to do is you're going to want to reevaluate your tolerance to the market, okay? Um, I've already talked about building resilience. That's understanding your program. The tolerance piece is to evaluate your actual exposure to the market, okay? How much of your total overall uh, portfolio do you have that's exposed to the market? You know, do you have $500,000 and you don't have $500 in the savings account? It might be worth looking at, okay? It's just a, a very open, holistic approach to looking at it and not waiting until an eventual downturn. Now, some people could take the downturn and others may not. The idea is to look at your tolerance and say, how would I react if I have $500,000? that's uh, in, in the market right now and it does take a 50% haircut, am I okay with that? Or should I be looking to maybe safeguard some of that profit now uh, and, and, and uh, re, uh, basically retune your uh, or recalibrate your risk tolerance, okay? You're gonna want to look at controlling your spending habits. This goes in line with your budget, but guys, stop buying so much crap, okay? There are people on YouTube who are claiming to be minimalists who buy way too much crap. In a consumer-driven society, we are all guilty of this, so stop self-dubbing yourself a minimalist, okay? It's absurd. You're not a minimalist, all right? 
What you can do is take a realistic approach to maybe not buying everything you see on the shelf. All right, maybe waiting until things go on sale, okay? Maybe doing a little bit more shopping at TJ Maxx and a little bit less shopping at Nordstrom, okay? Do you need to have a new piece of jewelry every month? I don't know. Do you need to have a new purse every month? I don't know. All I'm saying is pick one thing and try to keep it in check because if you have uncontrolled spending because you're always addicted to that small little bit of satisfaction that you get after you make that purchase only to have buyer's remorse after you've made the purchase, perhaps maybe there's some reevaluation that can be had there and you can look to control some of that spending habit that you have, okay? The next thing you're going to want to do in 2020 is you're going to want to share this message. You really are. Once it makes sense to you, you'd be amazed at how good uh, you can understand the material by taking it and paying it forward. And that's really a lot of the intangible benefit that I get from the channel. I've learned just as much from you guys as I've ever taught through the channel. I've evolved but I've also shared it. I've shared ideas that weren't well received. I've received ideas that I didn't agree with. The whole idea is that we're looking to strike at those individuals that need the information, identify who those people are, and share the information with those people who need it. Okay, super, super important, all right? The next one is to collaborate. Okay? If you have questions about anything in the investing world, you don't have to crawl to a financial planner anymore, guys. There's no excuse to not believe that there's not an answer out there to any question that you may have via the internet or somebody who's maybe been through your situation. That's the beauty of the community that I look to try to promote it is a collaborative effort of uh, people who have testimonials to talk about people who are young and old, people who are new investors, seasoned investors, who come on in a collaborative spirit and look to throw those best work practices on the table. It's amazing if you can just drop your ego just a little bit and not always be the one talking, but sometimes be the one listening, you'd be amazed at how that collaborative spirit will actually enrich your own personal financial makeup, okay? So we want to collaborate, all right? Um, the next is we want to improve our funding program. My initial recommendation for everybody is to earmark that $25 that can go into a funding program. If it's $25, look to push it to 50 you shouldn't need somebody like me sitting across from you saying, hey, maybe it's time to boost this up, or maybe I can do a little bit more 401k, or maybe I can do a little bit more 401k to get the matching free money, okay? Maybe there's a small gap there that can use a little bit of work. Maybe I can fund a little bit more to the savings. Maybe I can fund a little bit more to the kids' college education fund. Look to look at your dollar cost average schedule and where there's room for improvement, absolutely earmark those room for improvements and make it happen, all right? The next is, and we're getting close, this is actually 20 right here. This is for the investors out there who have come across my message and potentially been in the same situation that I've been in where you're just not happy with your financial planner. Perhaps maybe you need to take a hard look at that program. There will be a ton of people out there that are incapable and unwilling to break up. Okay? If it's time for you to break up, it's business. It's not personal. Okay? The landscape has changed so much. And it's not so, it's not so necessary anymore to seek out your exposure to the stock market with the services of a financial planner. That's just the environment we live in, okay? And, and um, I don't apologize for bringing this message of awareness to people, okay? Um, there was a time when I broke up with mine, shook his hand, thanked him for all that he did for me, um, but the impasse was very, very clear, and I would have been extremely unhappy to maintain a relationship between a professional and me as the client when I didn't feel like I was getting the level of service that I deserve, okay? Everybody deserves the level of service when it comes to their money 
and I contend on the Independent Investor Channel with just a little bit of research, a little bit of wherewithal, and a little bit of giving yourself a chance, I think you'll find that you can build a pretty strong base and start to have a little bit more confidence in yourself rather than have so much confidence in others. Okay, Super, super important. And the last bonus thing that I will offer in this video, 20 things that you can do for 2020, is to focus. One word, you gotta have laser focus. That's my bonus for this video. You have to be able to focus on this topic, okay? You're not gonna be able to render above average results in your financial program if you're just looking to take this topic and shelf it for your entire life, okay? Not only is that gonna be irresponsible, but it could be extremely costly the further you let it sit on the shelf. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this. Do's for 2020, 20 things that you can do to improve upon your financial picture as we look to turn the page on 2019 and enter into 2020. I hope this has hit home. I hope all of them hit home, but at least a few. Deploy a few. You'll be glad you did to improve upon your financial posture. Guys, you wanna hit the subscribe button, help us support the message we're putting through. If I miss something, leave it in the comments of this video below. Share the message with anybody looking to get some introductory information on some financial stewardship, financial discipline, and most importantly, some financial awareness. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video and good luck in your investment future.